Why does the CCP persecute dissidents? They have 10 reasons. The first reason is upholding the original ideological purity and authority of the CCP. So the CCP was established with a commitment to the Marcus and Linus principle, which aiming to transform China into a socialist state under the dictatorship proletariat. So dissidents who challenge the party's ideology, policies, or leadership are perceived as threat to the purity and effectiveness of these funding ideas. Just by questioning the CCP's decision, dissidents undermines the authority and legitimacy of the party they seek to maintain over the nation. So the persecution of these individuals serves to silence the opposition and to reinforce the narratives that the CCP is solely path to national prosperity and stability. And the second reason is maintain social stability. So dissidents often raise issues that are sensitive in the eyes of the CCP, such as human rights abuses, corruption, and policy failures. So this criticism can provoke the public dissent or even unrest, which is the CCP views as threats to social stability. So in the Chinese Communist Party's view, stability is paramount for economic development and maintaining its grip on the power. Therefore, the persecution of dissidents is rationalized as necessary measure to prevent the spread of the idea that could incite social instability. So by controlling this narrative and suppressing any dissenting voice, the CCP aims to maintain a harmonious society as per its definition, which is aligns with its governance and objectives. The third reason is consolidating their power and preventing any political fragmentation. So the CCP operates under single party rule without any competition, which view the political pluralism as a potential sources of chaos and division. So as the historical experience during the period, like the World War era or the Chinese nationalist government, dissidents who advocate for democratic reforms or multi-party system, or decentralization of the power will challenge the fundamental structure of the CCP's governance. So persecuting this distance helps the CCP to eliminate any challenges to CCP's monopoly on its power, which ensuring there's no alternative political movement gain enough momentum to fragment or weaken the CCP party's control. And the fourth reason is enforcing conformity and discouraging others. When the CCP persecute dissidents, it is not only silences the individuals directly affected, but also serves as a stark warning to others who may consider speaking out. So this tactic of enforcing conformity through fear discourages the broader population from engaging in any activity which perceived as a dissent. So the public display of these trials and severe penalties serves to reinforce these risks which associated with opposing to the Chinese Communist Party. So this strategy aims to cultivate a political culture where the conformity is the norm and the cost of dissent is viewed as extensively high. And the fifth reason is control over information. The controlling of narrative and the flow of information is a critical aspect of the CCP's governance strategy. So dissidents often use modern communication tools to spread information that the CCP considers harmful to this image or misleading to the public. Just by controlling what information is accessible, the CCP can shape the public perception and avoid the potential questioning of its authority. So the persecution of dissidents is therefore also a method to control and censor information, which ensuring that there's only the government approved message are dismissalated. So this control is pivotal in maintaining a coherence and favorable public image of the Chinese Communist Party and its policies. And the sixth reason is national unity and identity. The CCP places a high premium on the concept 
of national unity, which often framing it as essential to China's continued rise as a global power. So dissidents who advocate for the rights of ethnic minority or regional autonomy or criticize the policies regarding Tibet, Xinjiang, or Taiwan may be seen as threats to its national cohesion. So just by persecuting such dissent, the CCP seeks to suppress any sentiment that could foster division or weaken China's unity, unified national identity. So this approach not only maintains the narrative of singular Chinese identity under the CCP's swordship, but also aims to prevent any internal or external perception of vulnerability or disunity within the Chinese country. And the seventh reason is international image and sovereignty. The CCP is acutely aware of its international image and often perceives dissident activity, especially which attracts foreign attention or support as threat to its sovereignty and global standing. So the dissidents are often accused of being influenced or supported by foreign entities which framing their actions as part of broader efforts to undermine China. So just by persecuting these dissidents, the CCP aims to signal its refusal to tolerate the foreign interference and its capability to maintain its own internal affairs. So this is not only to reinforce its sovereignty, but also aims to deter the international support for dissident movement, which portraying as the support as the interfering of the Chinese domestic governance. And the eighth reason is economic control and development. So the economic stability and growth are the cornerstones of the CCP's legitimacy. So dissidents who criticize the Chinese Communist Party's economic policy or just expose the corruption within the state-controlled industry threaten to undermine public confidence in the party's ability to maintain economics. So just by silencing these voices, the CCP aims to maintain an image of economic competence and integrity. So persecuting economic dissidents can also serve to protect the interests of the party's elite and the state-run enterprises. So stifle the potential reforms or criticism that could disrupt economic stability or the CCP's economic plans. And the ninth reason is ideological purity in education and media. The CCP views the education and media as a key arena for promoting its ideological agenda and fostering a sense of patriotism and party loyalty. So dissidents who challenge this party's narrative in this sphere can be seen as corrupting in the mind of the public mind, so particularly in the youth. So just by persecuting such individual, the party aims to maintain control over educational content and media narratives, which can ensure that they are aligned with the official ideology and policies. So this strategy is crucial for indoctrinating the future generations and securing the party's ideological continuity. continuity. And the tenth reason is legacy and historical narratives. So maintaining a favorable interpretation of its historical legacy is crucial for the CCP. So dissidents who question the official history, especially sensitive topics such as the Cultural Revolution, the Great Leap Forward, or for some events like the Tiananmen Square, pose a challenge to the CCP's narrative of progress or benevolent rule. So the persecution of these individuals helps the Chinese Communist Party control the historical narratives, which ensuring that the history taught and remembered is one that glorifies the Chinese Communist Party's and justice is ongoing rule.